Hello everyone and welcome to today's Blender tutorial on how to make the infinite bookshelf effect from Interstellar. Here you'll learn how to make the bookshelves and how to make it loop seamlessly, as you see here. So without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's go and clear the scene and the baked lighting, that will become important later, and add in a new plane. This plane will be the basis for the entire effect. So let's add in a new material and add in our image texture. Now, for the image texture I chose, it was just a random bookshelf image from Google. So if we look at it, it's just this. Simple enough. And what I did next was I rotated this by 90 degrees. There we go. And put it over one meter. Just about that. Now let's scale this down and start extruding the sides of this so that we get the kind of stretched effect like in the movie. So to do that, let's just select a side and extrude it on the x-axis. Let's just move that over there and the y-axis, let's move that over there as well. And what we want to do next is extrude the top axes right here. But we're going to extrude it by 0.5 meters, so we want it to be halfway to the middle of this cube right here. So to do that, let's just move it up and we can eyeball it, we could fix it later. Just about right there, because we want this to be twice as wide as it is tall. And then what we want to do is take these edges and bring them to the center right here. You don't have to be too accurate, accurate with it because what we're going to do next is mirror this. So let's add in a mirror modifier right there, set it on the x and y axes and bisect it. But as we can see, we're only getting it mirrored like this. That's because we need to mirror it on a 45 degree angle. So to do that, we're going to make an empty right here and have the mirror object be that empty. There we go. And if we rotate this empty by 45 degrees, we can see that we're getting the mirror effect. Just like that. Pretty simple. Now that we have this, we can start the infinity process, or making it arrayed a ton of times. But we could go one step further and just copy this face and put it on the tops and the bottoms. Let's see, rotate this and put it down. Just so that we get the bookshelf on the bottom as well. There we go, and let's copy this for the top as well. That seems pretty good. Alright, now that we have this set up, we could finally go and make this uh, bookshelf infinite, or close to it. So let's add in an array modifier. There we go. We want to set this from relative offset to constant offset. That's so that if we change the uh, bounds of this, the offset won't change. Just to keep the consistency going, and that'll help us loop it later. We want to offset it by 2 meters and set the count to something like 10. Now, as we can see, we're getting some clipping right here. But to fix that, just bring in your uh, bookshelf in by a little bit. Now, as we can see, there is no clipping going on. Perfect. All right. So next up, we want to copy this array modifier using Shift-D and set this from the x-axis to the y-axis. So there we go. Now we have 100 cubes all right like this, but we're not quite done. We want to multiply this again by copying the ray modifier, so right now we have two going, and for this last one we want this to be on the z-axis by one meter. Or actually, we may need to squish this cube a little bit more. So let's scale this on the z-axis just so that these two parts meet. Let's see, something like that should be good, I think. Yeah, that's working quite well. As we can see, we're getting this kind of pattern right here that we can zoom in into infinity. So we'll get to the lighting soon to make it look all pretty and stuff like that. But now let's make this loop. So to do this, let's add in a new camera. Let's see, camera right here. Let's go into the viewport. Oh, it is oriented completely wrong because that's the wrong camera. Uh, if you ever need to add in a new camera to your scene, uh, go and press Control b so it becomes the active camera once it's selected. And now, as we can see, I'm at the new camera, and I need to position it correctly now. There we go. Something like this. That seems pretty good. There we go. I think that's pr positioned pretty well. And then what we want to do is set the focal length to something like 25. That just makes it a lot look a lot more trippy when you zoom in on it. There we go. I think that might be a bit too wide because we're seeing the bottom right here and we don't want to see that. We just want to see the top part of it. There we go. And now we could start with the uh, looping process. 
So to do that, we're going to set a keyframe while selecting the main object. Oh, one thing to note, uh, parent your mirror empty to the parent uh, to the uh, bookshelf object. That's so that you can move this without anything tripping up. Okay, so now let's keyframe this bookshelf on its default frame in its default position. And then at the end of your animation, let me make this a little bit bigger. We want to move this over by one cube. So as we know, this is about two meters wide in each axis besides the z-axis. So let's move this over by two meters by two meters. We could check that in the uh, settings right here. And then we want to move this one box down and we know that each box is one meter tall. So let's do that. There we go. And as we can see, this is now looping, but the interpolation is wrong. To fix that, just set this to the interpolation to linear using the T hotkey, set to linear, and now we can see, boom, that it's now uh, looping pretty much perfectly, even though I need to check the, uh, the camera bounds. Right now, the pass for out says that, oh, if something's outside the camera, just turn it black. So as we can see, there is a little bit of weird stuff going on when it loops because the it doesn't go down. But we could fix that fairly easily by just uh, either moving the camera up by one meter. And I think I'll do that. Move it up by one meter. There we go. There we go. Now there's no visible looping whatsoever. Okay. Now let's get into the lighting, which is the last stage of this process. So this, you could play around with this, do whatever you want. You could add in like lights to your scene or something like that. But I found that making the bookshelves glow a little bit looks very good. And I'll show you how I did that. Let's go and set the uh, bookshelf texture into the principled BSCF node. As we could see, uh, nothing much is happening because the world is black, except in the viewport thing. And in here, it's not looking too great. I found what works very well is to make a color ramp coming out from the bookshelf. And then we constrain it so that only these parts are glowing. But these parts are also a little bit orange in color. Let's set this to ease. I put it into the emission right there. And now we can see that these are now glowing a little bit. But if we set the emission strength to something like 7 or 6, I think that's pretty good. Let's set it to a bit more orange. Yeah, something like that. Now that we have this, we can go and bake the lighting. As you probably saw in the beginning, I deleted the lighting, the baked lighting. So to do that, what we want to do is add in an irradiance volume. There we go, irradiance volume right there. Let's see, where'd it go? I'm not entirely sure. Oh, it might have been in the wrong collection. So let's add in a light probe irradiance volume. There we go. And what this does in Eevee, if you're in cycles, you don't have to worry about this. I'll, I'll demonstrate that real quick. If you're in cycles, the lighting already works pretty much perfectly, as you can see here. And you could just render this out, do whatever you want with it. But in Eevee, we need to bake the lighting. So let's go and make this radiance volume very, very big. Uh, just like that, and we could uh, keep it somewhat in the middle. There we go. And now, if we go and bake the indirect lighting, I'm just going to turn this a little more orange because in cycles it was looking a little bit rough. So if we bake the indirect lighting, we can see that now if we go into the render view, oh, that's looking actually pretty good. That now it is, you know, orange tinted and all that. And yeah, that's pretty much the entire effect. We could do a little bit of editing like it's looking a little, I think that's looking pretty good. And yeah, that's basically it. If you want to customize your bookshelf a little bit, we could always go and like scale parts of it so that it looks more like that. I don't know, that's looking very, very good right now. That's basically the entire effect. Again, if you want this to look like it's moving down, uh, I just rotated the camera like that so that it looks like we're traveling down into the, I don't know, Tesseract. And you could also add modifiers to the, the kind of loop room before that. Uh, in one of them, I had a solidify modifier so that the walls had a little bit of thickness, just like that. But yeah, that's basically it. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to like and subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out my Twitter account where you would see uh, previews of what I'm working on next. My Gumroad account has plenty of free and paid products that are useful for beginners and inter intermediates alike. So yeah.
Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial.